don't you love a little private eye intro? Solemn, gloomy day. An office with the main character's name written across the door. A tall, handsome man, but lonely. Skilled, clever, great at his job, but down on his luck and barely making ends meet. Sitting there, contemplating life at his desk, when suddenly a shape appears beyond his door and a beautiful woman enters. He's the only man she can turn to, what with his cunning, his investigative skills, his deep knowledge of the arcane and mastery of the Earth's elements. Okay, so this one's a little bit out of the norm. Hello everyone, my name is Jared Spiker, and today I would like to bring you my thoughts on the audiobook for Stormfront of the Dresden Files. Stormfront is the most recent audiobook I have completed, and as much as I'd like to hold it here in front of you, you're just going to have to settle with the hard copy because... Damn intangible audiobooks, right? So Stormfront is the first book in Jim Butcher's well-known Dresden Files, and the audiobook is read by James Marsters. This is my first one of these, these audiobook reviews, and I thought I'd start off with something I really loved. I'll tell you right off the bat, I think that this is a very worthwhile audiobook. And even if you've never listened to an audiobook before, this would be a great place to start. You have no idea how long I had to dig through my wall of books to find this. It's occurring to me, I probably should do this in front of my wall of books, but... Okay, that might have to be for next time. So, as would make sense, let's start off with a little bit about the story. Because what's the most important thing about an audiobook? The quality of the book itself. Stormfront and the Dresden Files as a whole are about a sort of wizard P.I named Harry Dresden. And as I said before, he is the very stereotypical P.I. He is, you know, rugged, handsome, but keeps to himself. He's down on his luck. He doesn't have a lot going for him. What makes this different is the magic. No, I'm not gonna lie. I really like the whole modern-day setting with a magical twist. I think it's great. But specifically with this book, I think that the magic was done very, very well. It doesn't go into specifics. It, it keeps the magic very abstract. You don't know how it works. You're not supposed to know how it works. You just know that it does. You know when Harry can use it and how he goes about doing it. And I wouldn't have it any other way. A lot of times I like to know exactly how it works, but the way Jim Butcher writes this, it really doesn't matter because it's not about the magic. It is about Harry Dresden and the mysteries he is solving. This is not a fantasy novel. This is a mystery novel. And I really don't want to give too much away because going through the story, going through the mystery is all the fun, right? But I will tell you this, in true P.I. fashion, Harry is working two cases. He's working one for a beautiful woman, and one for the police. The beautiful woman, her name is Monica, comes into his office distraught because she cannot find her missing husband. She clearly doesn't know if Harry is legit, if all his claims of true magic are real. She is clearly afraid that they are. But nevertheless, she comes to him. The second case, more pressing to Harry, and more gruesome, is his one with the police. His friend in the Special Investigations Unit has called them in. After discovering a crime scene at a hotel, a hitman for the mob and his companion have been found in the middle of you rented a hotel room type activities, murdered clearly by magic, their hearts torn from their chests. All right, that's as far as I'm gonna go with description because you can just find that online, right? I think that this is a fantastic book. It is hilarious. Harry Dresden is witty, obviously. He's the private investigator type. Everyone expects that coming. But his inner monologue, it's written in the first person, and his inner monologue is great. Talking about the people who doubt his magic. Talking about the mythical creatures he encounters along the way. Vampires and fairies. It is all such glib, dry humor. And you can't help but enjoy it. This book is also very engaging. The mystery is fantastic. And the one bad thing I can say about the book, not necessarily bad, but the one con I can give it is that it was not too hard of a mystery to figure out. Now, I consider myself pretty good at figuring out these mysteries, um, especially books where, like this one, where you know there, there's not a lot of red herrings. Everything in it obviously plays to the mystery. If he finds... You know, if he finds a shiny rock on the ground, this isn't one of the clues, but say if he finds a shiny rock on the ground, I know that if Jim Butcher took the time to point that out, it's important. It, well, it's supposed to be a detail that you look over. As long as you don't, 
it's not too hard to really figure out where it's going to go. Now, when I say that, I don't mean you know how the story is going to progress. You have no idea. This book has police intrigue. It has mob attacks. It has magic attacks. It has the mystery of the magic that you're still trying to figure out. And above all, it has Harry tracking down this murderer. It's this game of cat and mouse. And you want him to succeed so much. That being said, that means for me, the most disappointing part of this story was the big reveal where, he, where Harry learns who it was. Because you're sitting there going, of course it was. And while you understand why Harry didn't figure that out, it's clear to you if you are looking at Jim Birch's writing and saying, why would he mention that if it's not important? However, I cannot stress enough how interesting and exciting it is every step of the way while he's trying to find this murderer. And while he's trying to help Monica, the girl from before, his kind of side case that's going on. So although I haven't read the whole book, I can tell you confidently that even if you don't listen to audiobooks, it is a book that is worth reading. You should go out and do it now, even if you don't like fantasy, and even if you don't like mystery. If you like either one of the two, you are probably going to like this book, because it has such strong elements of both. All right, and hopefully for what's going to set this review apart, what's going to make it different. How good was the audiobook? Now what that really means, of course, is how good was the narrator? The narrator, as I said before, is James Marsters. So, prose? I thought his voice acting was fantastic. He is, a lot of times with audiobooks, the way they are read is disengaging, and this is absolutely not the case. The way he interprets Harry's voice is fantastic. And both because the way he, Harry speaks to other people and the way Harry thinks are so different. And they're so reflective of what you think the tones of his speech and the tones of his thought would be. He picks up on all the subtleties, all the little jokes in the text. And I've got to say that one of the most disappointing things in audiobooks for me is when a, a narrator, a reader, reads over something that's clearly supposed to be sarcastic or is supposed to be a joke and doesn't put that little, that little, that, 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 that edge on it to let you in on it, to let you know you should listen to this part because it's good. And while they shouldn't have to, that's something that when you're reading a book, I think you kind of do in your head, right? And so when it's being read to you, if that's not there, it's like you're missing out. And James Marsters has no problem with that. In true PI fashion, again, there are a lot of kind of love interests going on. And some of them, you know, actually have encounters with Harry, wherever that leads to. But <laughs> James Marsters has this ability to read out a woman's lines that are supposed to be sensual, there's an incident with a love potion, I'm not going to get into it, but essentially, he can read out, you know, a woman trying to be alluring, clearly better than I can, and it is fantastic, right? You, you feel, even though it is this man reading out these lines, you, you pick up, like, the feminine allure in it, and I think that is great. I find it funny that I was so impressed by it looking back, I don't know why, but seriously... When you listen to this audiobook, try and you'll, you'll know the scene when you get to it. Listen for it. I promise you will get a little chuckle at how sensual he makes these characters seem. However, the downside to him that I found kind of lies in how well he reads out the, you know, P.I. story fashion, right? Like, the book is written like the, the, the private investigator movies, like the monologue that goes on inside their head. And he reads it out like a private investigator movie monologue would go. However, the problem with that is that when he's doing it, for some reason, it sounds like you're in his mouth when you're reading. And I don't mean like his voice sounds like it's too close to you. It's that you could hear every time he swallows. And I'm trying to do it dramatically now. It's not working, but you hear like, it sounds disgusting, but you hear like his tongue move in his mouth and you hear the saliva. And it, in some ways, if you can get past like hearing someone swallow while they read you a book, which is strange. I think it's strange. Uh, if you can get past it, it really makes it seem like it is Harry, you are in Harry Dresden's head. Or Harry Dresden himself is telling you this story. But it, it was kind of a turn off for me right off the bat. So, in summary, I thought the story, phenomenal. I thought the narration, probably as good as you were going to get for this kind of book. All right, so for some reason my video quality is failing fast, so I will be quick. I really recommend you get this audiobook, especially if you have Audible. It's relatively short. It's only eight hours long. I like a short audiobook. I know a lot of people like a big one, you know, more bang for your buck. But I like a good workday-long audiobook if you can get away with that kind of thing. 
So I will just give you a little one sentence review slash recommendation. If you like fantasy, or if you like mystery, or if you like audiobooks, or if you never tried it in audiobook before, you're not sure what to think, but you think that this book sounds interesting, I really recommend you give it a shot. Especially in the last case, it may change how you experience books. It certainly played a role in that for me. So, I hope I haven't bored you guys to tears. I hope you have a great day. It is beautiful and sunny out here now. I don't know if you can hear the birds chirping in the background, but that would be kind of a cool effect. But anyway, bye, and thanks for listening.